What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ink Drink Think, episode 17. On this episode, this January of 2021, we're getting into one of DC's big events that's happening right now, which is DC's Future State, which if you're not aware of, it's essentially a time jump in DC Comics where they're uh, speculating what could happen in the future of the DC universe. In this new future, there are a lot of new characters donning uh, classic titles such as the new Batman, the new Superman, the new Wonder Woman, the new Flash, you name it. And in honor of that, the fellas today are going to be redesigning classic DC characters with a futuristic spin. Uh, not necessarily future state directly, but we're going to be talking about future timelines in general. Uh, future state will come up from time to time. Uh, the designs in that are fantastic. And I definitely was referencing what they were doing for my own piece for tonight, but we'll get into that as we go on. Anyways, guys. <laughs> I am Michael Pickard, and as always, I am joined by my wonderfully talented co-hosts and friends, Johnny Wise. Johnny, you are up. Hey, I'm Johnny. Um, so I thought for future states, it would be cool to imagine Red Robin, but as like a 30-odd-year-old. Um, so I've gone with that. Um, I'm doing basically a cover. I've got like a title and everything. I figured it would be cool to like have his story as like a continuation of detective comics because he's like the detective you one so i went back to like the old logo uh <laughs> the cover is like in panels which i basically just completely ripped off of becky clunan's recent cover but that's okay she's very good so uh, why not yeah um, and as as with the suicide squad episode i went a little bit i got a little bit carried away with head cannon. So I've got some other smaller panels of what would happen in this imaginary story. Uh, I've got like a gang emerging based on Scarecrow called the Sons of Crane. I've got Roman Sionis coming back somehow, mysteriously. And I've got a little bit of a Stephanie Brown in there as well. Um, should be fun. Quite a, quite an in-depth cover. I don't think I'll get it all done. But <laughs> I'm going to have fun with what I do. Um, and tonight I'm drinking a Copperberg because there was a deal on and I got 15 of them for like a tenner. <laughs> Represent nice. man. Awesome. being cheap, yeah. being a broke artist. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it, man. Well, I'm excited to see this red Robin turn out because Tim is my favorite Robin. And, uh, I, I know do. you, you touched a little bit upon like what your, your whole universe and story entails. And I came up with one for my character as well. Um, so we Good. can probably spit all those throughout the episode as well. Yeah, man. But of course, guys, joining us as always, our fellow co-host and friend, Nate Wells. Hey, guys, Nate Wells. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a design for a future Blackhawk. Um, I didn't get really as far as I planned on and actually deciding who this character was. It's a it's a new character that's going to take on the mantle years and years, you know. Uh, I guess probably roughly like a hundred years after the original Black Hawk and, and the Black Hawk squadron that's been revived and they're just like cool uh, sci-fi fighter pilots now um, as opposed to the cool sci-fi fighter pilots of World War II. Um, <laughs> I went back and forth on my design how like future I wanted to go. Um, I ended up going with like something that that feels a little bit more maybe probable for... 20-ish years in the future um not not too far out of reach but also just looks really cool and and uh, i've taken some elements of the the classic black hawk look and implemented them into this design uh really excited to get into it probably not not gonna finish i gotta draw like a whole like a whole ass jet and uh and a woman so we'll see <laughs> we'll see how that goes but uh tonight i'm drinking a lone star um Proudly brewed in Texas since like 1884 is what the can. <laughs> yeah, uh, drink it out of my uh, 512 brewing glass to make it look like it is a better beer. Sorry, Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, I've seen the pencils for your uh, your Black Hawk piece, and I'm excited for the direction you went with. Um, mm. you d I feel like you don't tackle like far sci-fi with like sci-fi tech that often and so i'm really excited to see yeah, how like, really. you do, like her suit yeah. and uh the jet in the yeah. background it's gonna be really cool to see yeah i tried to do as little futury stuff as possible no i'm kidding um... <laughs> <laughs> well hey man i'm excited to see how it turns out but 
to round out the quartet. Of course, we are joined by teacher Todd himself, Todd Blackwood. Todd, I have no idea what you drew tonight, so I'm really excited to see what you came up with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, t- I think I told the other guys while you were uh, off camera at some point, but I'm doing Mr. Freeze. Um, oh, man, this has been interesting. So I don't know if you guys can see that terribly well. I might have to turn Close down. The- A little closer. Closer. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I'm yeah. So the the globes around his legs, especially, I think I'm probably gonna get rid of those. They seem like a good idea at the time. Um, but this is a very loose interpretation of Mister Freeze from Batman Beyond. I was mm. going to do the Mister Freeze from Batman Beyond, and then I started thinking that I wanted to sort of do my whatever take uh, or go to whatever direction felt right to me. Um, I got to say, I'm, I'm not super into, I'm still trying to find my enthusiasm for future state a little bit. And um, I think it wasn't until I thought maybe Mr. Freeze would be interesting that then I kind of got more excited about drawing it. Cause uh, I thought, you know, I, I haven't done a drawing of Mr. Freeze since I was a kid. Um, so it'd be fun. I, I really feel like Mr. Freeze deserves a good treatment and I'm oh yeah hoping mm. that I can give him uh what he deserves here. Um <laughs> I think that's my roundabout way of saying that I'm I'm a little nervous about this one cuz it doesn't quite seem to be coming together the way that I want. Um especially his gun. I'm trying to make everything look see-through and uh, I've been looking at a lot of pictures of blue blue ice. Um, I want him to have kind of a crack old ice look, maybe like a big ice cube, but, um, I don't know. We're going to, we'll be interesting to see what happens here. So nice. Is he still just a head? Uh, well, he, he's got the head in there. If that's what you mean. But well, in Batman yeah, Beyond, wasn't spider he just body, didn't yeah. he? Oh yeah. He was a head in a robot by the end in Batman <laughs> well, Beyond, right? Well, Johnny, you have watched the animated series then. Uh, <laughs> I've watched some <laughs> liar. Yeah, no, I, no, I think he gets in the episode's great. He gets regenerated, I want to say, and um, I don't. I have to watch it because I have Batman Beyond. I haven't watched in a long time, and it's great. I've been really hankering to watch it again. So I think he gets regenerated, and I don't understand. I don't remember what the story was there, but he he becomes he eventually his body starts going cold again, and he gets a new suit suit and i think he dies um or something but i think he dies at the end it's uh one of those grim episodes that they they could they could did some pretty macabre stuff on batman beyond they did um yeah so um for me he's got some kind of a body probably in there uh if i would probably just draw the head with the spider legs if i was going to do that which was very tempting that would be really (laughs) fun to do or have him be a tank or something um (laughs) yeah i I was thinking if he was see-through and like a big piece of ice it'd be interesting to do like a skeleton in there so he's got Mm. you know his skeleton Mm. still um but i'm making this up as i go along which is always a recipe for disaster so we'll see how (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> kick some ice <laughs> let's kick some yeah. ice yeah yes nice. we'll see what happens <laughs> well here guys just to uh jump to mine real quick before we get into the yeah. topics for tonight like i said i'm michael pickard and tonight i'm going to be redesigning shazam in a futuristic setting um oh, and kind cool. of like johnny i went a little bit like in depth with the character and i was thinking about some influences that i thought would be cool and i started with shazam should be a tibetan monk and then i remembered the Green Lantern from Batman Beyond is a Tibetan monk. And oh, I was like, yeah. I don't want to go with that directly. I was like, I kind of mm. want to do something with like Buddhism slash reincarnation slash like the Dalai Lama as a concept. Mm. So wow. my pitch is years in the future, uh, Black Adam has died. And every time that he dies, he actually is reincarnated. And he, of mm. course, is the leader of Kondak the country in the DC universe. And so his people have kind of like chosen the reincarnation in the same way that the Dalai Lama is selected every reincarnation. Mm. And Mm. so there have been a ton of different new bearers of like the champion who are the, like Mm. the leader, the like religious leader slash like Mm. 
um, king slash protector of Kondok. And so this character is the Shazam of like 500 years in the future. And he's the like, he's kind of like a figurehead uh, and the spiritual leader. Like, and his stories would revolve around like the divide between him being like the king but there's like the senate that kind of actually controls the po- politics and direction of the country and so like mm-hmm. that divide between like are you a figurehead like what do you like are you just being puppeteered by these people it's kind of the whole for the setup for the character um but i'm having mm-hmm. a lot of fun with it like I, I kind of imagine him being like ang in terms of personality from avatar the last airbender he's kind of like flowing a little bit he's not like a very like rigid nice. character um but here, if I flip around my camera, I will show you the pencils. So uh, here, guys, I uh, can show you. Um, this is the character as of right now. Um, I tried Ooh. to go with some influences from Batman Beyond as well as um, just like various Shazam uh, iconography and a little bit of Greek slash uh, Mediterranean vibes mm-hmm. and interests. Oh. Like, um, so he wow. kind of has like a Caesar crown, like the, uh, the, the like olive branch type looking crown with the leaves on it. Um, but it's wow. a lightning bolt, kind of like Zeus. Um, he has like awesome. an overslung cape on the one side. Um, yeah, that's cool. Kind of an asymmetrical mm, yeah. look, like the lightning bolt comes over the shoulder. Um, I like that, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, can, you. Can you put the face a little closer to the camera? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's see if I can Wait, get the please. focus there. Oh, wow. That's yeah, cool. that was looking cool. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. I actually have a lot of new techniques planned for this piece. Um, as you can see, I did the whole cityscape in the background. Um, I'm going to try to go for like a Mobius thing where I don't do like brushwork on the background of the buildings. Like it, I don't want to do any brushwork on the buildings, which I normally do. I just want it to be straight Oof. line work on the background. Um, but then I also yeah. have an idea for what I'm going to do with the clouds yeah. and how the lightning, if you can see, it's kind of like, drawn to his hand there's going to be a perspective on the lightning coming from the clouds um but this is all stuff i'm going to do off camera i'm only going to be inking <laughs> the figure tonight because um i'm on my third cup of coffee for the day and uh i'm i'm shaky so <laughs> jittery yeah we're just going to stick so with you're going to finish this in like five minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's going to zip around with my erratic inking style <laughs> i'm on a roll guys <laughs> but of course guys uh, as we said, we're going to be talking about future timelines tonight, and I wanted to bring up this topic to you guys really quick, and you might not have an, an answer off the top of your head, but I have one. But, of course, there are great tropes of future timelines, but there are also terrible ones. And one that I, I distinctively really dislike is when a story cuts to the future and a character will just have a robotic limb for no reason. <laughs> oh yeah in the time frame that you've been missing you know batman has lost both of his legs and so he's got spider things like darth maul in the right. clone wars you know uh like um it's one of those tropes that's like i get why they do it because it shows like advancement in technology really easily but it also does feel a little bit cheap if you ask me <laughs> mm-hmm. can, you name, yeah. can you name an instance where they do that like is this an animation thing or a comics thing or like, is this like something that was in Legion of Superheroes? Or it's kind of just a like a trope in in a lot of media. I feel like, um, yeah, totally. A, so a character who who this isn't really part of that, but like Cable, for example, has a robotic oh. arm. Like, there's no reason yes, for does. Cable to be half robotic, right. you know, other than like yeah. it adds to his backstory when he was introduced. But that's a prime example of like mm-hmm. characters coming back from the future or like going to the future and they look like Cable. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's because that's because all those image guys design those characters with their uh, Arthur Adams X Men annual number ten sitting out in their laps. <laughs> 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 so totally, they stole that stuff. Do you guys have any uh, particular future timelines that you're big fans of? I know, um, probably the the one that's universal is Batman Beyond. That's one of the like the great future timelines for any character in media that like really works and really stuck with people. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's the main one for me that I think of. Um, there's that and old man, Logan. I was a big fan of. Mm. Yeah. And kingdom come is a good example. It, that counts, right? Oh that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of seems like that's future state done already personally, but I don't know. 
Yeah, it does feel a little bit like Future State is something that they've kind of already done quite a lot, quite a lot, and that a yeah. lot of companies have already kind of done. <laughs> but yeah, well, oh well. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of rumor and hearsay about what Future State actually is. Um, I don't know if you, mm-hmm. you know if you guys remember in 2019 that there was a whole initiative planned for um, 5G that was going to set a definitive timeline for the DC universe. Yeah. Um, hmm. um, there's after Dan DiDio's um, leaving of, of the company. Um, yeah. A lot of people assume that the projects that were intended for 5G um, were already a, an issue or two in. And so DC just scrapped the entire project and said, whatever you did for the two issues is what we're putting out. And it's just going to be like a month long event and we'll call it future state or something. And they put a logo on it and everything. Um, So there's like, there's a lot of rumor about like what future state was intended to be, how it came about. Um, But that, that was kind of like um, one potential reason for why it, it exists in the first place. That's interesting because mm. I saw I saw I watched an interview with Dan D Didio D- 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 whatever D- Didio Didio uh, just yesterday and he said that quote unquote five uh, G the name five G was just a placeholder for something else and I it was something he just said offhand and I was like wait what um, so I don't know he I, I don't know if that was just a a, a name for it that they were gonna yeah, who knows? <clears throat> I have to say though, I do really love the designs that have come out of it, or at least several of them. Um, Some of them are great. Yeah, yeah, I really that do. Wonder Woman design is great. I love it oh, so yeah. much. The the yeah. Yara Floor Wonder Woman design. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, I... Joel, Joel is fantastic. Yeah, actually, any of the Trinity of uh the new future state i really love all three of those designs like the john kent superman feels like what a a, a younger futuristic john kent would wear in that yeah role. i definitely i definitely don't mind it I, I think it looks pretty good i i like that it's more simple than what he's wearing sort of in like the present timeline it does look mm-hmm. a little more iconic a little more super manny i think with the batman designs though the ones that i've seen i really really like them um the nick darrington one and then the um the one that dan mora did uh but i wonder if like you could have pushed it farther like both of those looks are almost something that i could kind of you know almost see just being like alternate looks for regular timeline bruce wayne batman yeah i know what you mean and that's that's not that's not a bad thing. I do really really like those looks. I think that they're really good. But the Nick Darrington one, uh, especially, um, Nick Darrington is I think just like a really really thoughtful update of the classic Batman suit. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, I have you read it? N- no. <laughs> I'm just talking I, I, about stuff that I haven't read. So <laughs> I read it. I thought it was really good. Um, well, somewhat good. I mean, I'm not always the best judge of quality with things. So a lot of the time I just read stuff and I'm like, yeah, that seemed good to me. But I liked it a lot. Um, I liked the direction they were going with it. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it's the story's fantastic. Yeah, I like the everyone other attached for, for stories and and well for comics in particular is that if I like the artist generally i'm going to like it so i I still have no idea how i feel about the the story i think i liked it but i know i like nick darrington (laughs) yeah nick darrington's amazing yeah he's phenomenal yeah actually have you guys seen um so luke fox is the current um batman in the future state timeline um Uh have you guys there's an alternate that um that wasn't chosen for the main suit that it actually it's like an all black suit uh-huh. and then it has like a yellow bat logo on the the chest right and you can actually see luke fox is like chin and mouth like the classic batman suit but uh-huh. i think i think it was a really great way of showcasing that this batman was african-american and like like altering that suit design to like um really pull out the colors and like make everything like 
complementary. Like all of the colors in the suit really work well. And aren't isn't just like, oh, there's like an African American guy in a Batman costume. It's like he's his own character. Like he's his own person. It was a really cool design and I wish they had gone with mm. it. But the one that we got is also yeah, really I, fantastic. Yeah, I liked I liked both of them. I the one the one that you were just talking about reminded me of the suit that Batman wears in um in that short lived uh cartoon what was it called Ooh. Beware the Batman? the Batman. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks yeah. like. Oh yeah. Yeah, it looks like that suit. Um which is it's a great design. I think it's yeah, really Yeah, I like that design. I like that really stylized look for that whole series as well. Mm-hmm. I don't really see much of it, but I like the Yeah, I didn't watch any of it. I like how pretty weird good. Batman looks in it. <laughs> was that the CGI one? Yeah. 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 I love those proportions on that character and that they did. Mm. That was so cool looking. I really liked his face. It was kind of hellboyish, I thought. Uh, I would assume they were probably... I think Mignola's always in there somewhere with them trying to design yeah. stuff. <laughs> but it was... Uh, I tried to watch it, though, and I couldn't get through a lot of it. And I, I want to say that maybe it was just slightly too early for a CGI cartoon. Like maybe a few yeah, years later, the technology that. had gotten a lot better, but I I don't remember now. But I I do remember loving the designs, thinking they were really cool. I don't know who designed that stuff. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I was talking about. I feel like with the Batman designs, they could have maybe pushed like the uh, pushed it a little bit more to make it less something that. Bruce Wayne would wear like I think about the the Sean Murphy white knight suit and how mm. at least in my opinion something a look like that might have been more uh different um and again I I can't say it it's not to say that I don't like the designs I think that they're fantastic um mm. all of them that I've seen but uh like the John Kent Superman that's something I really like the suit but I wouldn't if they said in the regular timeline, okay, Clark Kent is wearing the suit now. I'd be like, mm, okay, mm. let's calm down a little bit. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah, I actually think that suit benefits from the fact that it's not Clark because it looks like something Definitely. a younger. It looks like a younger man's clothes. Like definitely. Like I, I always mm. think that. Like, interestingly enough, Christopher Reeve was like 24 when he was cast as Superman, but he looked like a 30 wow. to 45 year old. You know, he he looked a lot older yeah. in that role. And I, I do he think looks that, like, like, yeah, he looks like him. Yeah. Yeah. I think the more mature the individual is that that's saying for acting, but particularly like drawing Superman. Um, I, I think the suit looks more appropriate, but the John Kent one for that, for, on that same note, I think looks like something a contemporary young adult would wear in a world with superheroes. That is definitely it's it's you know it keeps the classic superman in mind he doesn't really look like john kent superboy anymore he definitely looks like superman but like a new superman oh, so that's yeah, why he I does. Think that, that that design is really really successful um it doesn't it reminds me of the classic suit but it's 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 definitely a new thing um same with with the uh, the wonder woman design uh, it's mm. definitely wonder woman but you know it's mm. it's very blue um, whereas the classic Wonder Woman suit is, you know, I, th- I think the main, the predominant color in it is red. Um, and just some of the designs are like kind of Kirby-esque and, uh, mm. yeah, like it's, I, I can't, I can't stop looking at that suit. Mm. That's cool. I think it also speaks to the power of that design that, and, and I'm sure the, the character, I, I've heard the, the first issue that has come out with that Wonder Woman is actually quite fun um i think that design really caught people's attention because she's getting her own tv show really she's a yeah and she's a character who only has one issue of a comic book out um wow but i think it does speak particularly to the power of that suit design because it's so impressive oh Mm. it's good yeah i have a feeling she'll be especially being she's having a tv show made about her i feel like that's the character that will actually stick around from this whole event I could see her. Yeah. Act- I could actually yeah. see them using this character to slowly transition away from Diana Prince as Wonder Woman, fully from the main continuity. Really? Yeah, I, be- I think Why particularly you- because um, she's a character. And similar issue with the Flash, for that matter, is there aren't a lot of seminal graphic novels with those characters, and that's where sales are right now. Um, 
and of course there was just Wonder Woman Dead Earth, but um, there aren't many books for like a lot of the DC characters, Aquaman being another one that people point to as like, oh, this is the killing joke for that character in terms of like equivalence and craft and impact on the character. But yeah. I have a feeling that they're using this this new Wonder Woman as a opportunity to tell new stories and and potentially make impactful comics with a Wonder Woman. It's just not Diana Prince. Huh. Well, what is her relation to Diana Prince? Like, what is is she Wonder Woman or is she? I mean, she sounds like a new character. So she is. Um, she's a descendant of Amazons. So she is an Amazon, but she's from South America. Wow. Um, yeah, she's Brazilian, right? Yes, I believe so. Um, and I think Diana Prince is actually uh, like a god. Like she's like oh. moved into like a new phase of her evolution, I guess. Uh um interesting yeah and so wonder woman's off being like part of like the olympic gods and there's a new one yeah the pantheon oh interesting which for me i think that works really well i think it it's that's a pretty great reason to like have a new person fill that role similar to the whole bringing it back to batman beyond like terry mcginnis is a great fill-in for batman because Bruce Wayne is old and decrepit by the point that he comes around. So it doesn't feel like yeah. it doesn't feel like Azrael taking on the role of Batman where it's like, oh, Bruce Wayne is going to come back at some point. Like it feels like, oh, Bruce Wayne yeah, will never be Batman cool. again. So this is impactful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, seems like there's a right way and a wrong way to do that and this might be this might be the right way. But we'll, you know, we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah, I think they're just kind of like seeing what sticks yeah that seems that that seems like it I, it's interesting though like that's actually a pretty re like if they're hoping to replace wonder woman and never go back that's actually a really interesting move on their part because i mean it's almost like like it, it let's say that happens like then what are there no more wonder woman movies or we scratch the i mean i guess the new one kind of bombed so <laughs> um <clears throat> at, at least as far as i know but i mean it would be interesting to see them you'd think they'd kind of keep it separate and want to do both right just, i think and i just both, mean yeah. from like a money money making point of view you know um, so it's inter it's interesting that they would sort of take that tact of, in other words, like they wouldn't, they, there's no way they would do like Batman Beyond as the new permanent Batman where Bruce Wayne is never right. going to be Batman again. Like they'll never cross that thing off the list. Yeah, I think something like so, that or like Miles Morales would be kind of the models uh, to go yeah. off of where you, where you do, like you are going to have fans of this new character, you know, if they do create a following. Yeah. But you I can always, like, in the other title, you can see Peter Parker be Spider-Man, or you can see Bruce Wayne yeah. be Batman still. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the whole thing seems very, um, like, they're seeing what sticks, but nothing looks permanent to me. At the, like, the, as soon as they, they announced it, I was like, okay, this is, unless, like, people really like one or two of these characters, everything else is going away forever. Like, it's them trying stuff mm. out, really, isn't it? Could be. I support it, though. I think it's cool of them to do it in the first place because, you know, I, I always think about the fact that uh, the, one of the issues I have with reading monthly comics is that standpoint of I could pick up, like I stopped reading The Flash a couple years ago. I could pick it back up and pretty much know what's happening. Oh, yeah. Um, which, mm. which, which is great because it gives new readers five years from now the opportunity to like latch on to like Barry Allen, for example but it means that there's no impact. Like there's no stakes of me reading this book. It, unlike, yeah. unlike an independent work like saga, which um, has like a beginning, middle and end that it's mm -hmm. leading towards. Um, and I, I, I think it's cool. The, the opportunity, like going back to the wonder woman thing, I was saying like, this gives them the ability to go, we can tell a conclusive story with this wonder woman and eventually bring back Diana Prince but we'll have this character to like have this more image comic or independent dark horse, whatever you want to say, storytelling mm -hmm. model with this character mm -hmm. in that role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's something that the big two are probably wanting to do. Um, 
although from a lot of what they put out, it may, might not seem like it, um, but they've got to want to do more stories with ends, I would think. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what knows? I want. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what a lot of people want. And, it, and that does that's not to say I want Batman to end or I want Wonder Woman to end. But it's like, tell me a Wonder Woman story where something happens. And then in the next story, yeah. if if that next story ignores this story, that's fine because I still have the other one that I like. I also might like this one. Yeah. You know, that's the way, at least to me, to tell stories with like 80-year-old characters. And that's something that DC, to their credit, has done probably better than Marvel. Marvel tries to keep continuity like to a fault. Like it's, you know, in the last probably... 20 years they've they've broken out of it a little bit um hmm. well actually on that point i well, my theory is that immortal hulk was marvel's attempt at that model of storytelling because hmm. th that book is very creator driven like it wouldn't exist without hmm. um it's al ewing who writes it correct hmm. uh, I think so. uh yeah if it's not al ewing i really like immortal hulk i'll put it up on the on the screen right now if it's not al ewing but um <laughs> yeah we're morons so. yeah <laughs> but like i my theory <laughs> is that that book was intended to be like we don't have any hulk graphic novels that sell other than like planet hulk let's try to let's take that independent comic approach to this story and we'll we'll see how well it does and it's performing incredible it's outselling batman yeah you know oh is it is it incredible really? uh, it's incredible wow. <laughs> that's fantastic i didn't know that yeah, it really upset the the you know superhero comic uh, market just out of the standpoint of like the Hulk is outselling Batman. What world yeah. is this? Um, <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Um, but I think it speaks Hulk? to like what the audience wants. Uh, well, does it or do you, I mean actually I I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, do you think what the audience wanted was uh in Immortal Hulk's timeline or is it just because it's a really well-made comic? Uh that's or you know, it's good writing. Um I don't even know what it is. I I I am sort of, you know, very peripherally aware of it, but I couldn't tell you what exactly is going on. I think it, what is he can't die. It's like body horror hulk yeah that's fascinating it's very cool i like it a lot well let me put it this way so it's a it's some writer that came in and he's been the one doing it this whole time right correct is that correct yeah mm -hmm. do you think if he left the when he leaves the book do you think it's going to continue to to sell really well no i think they'll revert it back to like a normal hulk status quo uh and what what you guys were saying is, tell tell me if I'm interpreting this correctly. But the way you, the, I think the way you see it is that <clears throat> Marvel makes changes to character, but it's all in the one big overall co continuity. Whereas DC seems to keep rebooting things, like trying to start over. Is that correct, or am I misunderstanding what was said? Yeah, I think in a way, but also, I mean, DC, I think, is starting to, I say starting, but they, they, at least to me, it seems like they understand that a lot of their big successes are are the quote-unquote Elseworld stories, um, mm. you know, where things are kind of allowed to breathe and, and you know, you do get somebody like Frank Miller, uh, Mark Wade in there to really just tell a story. And those yeah. are the things that are selling for 25 30 years um yeah. over yeah. over the sales of monthly comics um where they are probably trying to keep some kind of continuity um yeah but i think it's fine to to honestly like do both like have have maybe a yeah. main title where you try and maybe keep some kind of continuity but then yeah. also just like have an outlet to tell me good stories but I also don't care that, you know, if on a monthly book, if a new writer comes on and the tone is different and it's a different story now, like, that's fine. And, you know, maybe a new writer doesn't want to use 
a character that the last writer introduced like that's okay because i understand that yeah. these characters have been around since the 40s or the 60s yeah and it's gonna be different you know just tell me a good story in the world of that character mm. pick and choose what you want is what i think yeah and there's probably somebody that's you know in the industry that is probably you know has more education and and comic storytelling that would be like well you can't really do that for these reasons but to my dumb brain mm. that makes sense mm -hmm. Well, the experience is probably these folks come in with ideas that may or may not be great, and then they're met with reality, which is whether it sells or not, and it's probably hard to decipher whether it's good or whether it's a fad, and meanwhile, you can say you want to do all this stuff, but the person above you, whoever that might or might not be, is going to be like, hey, this is what's selling, you have to do this. Right. I mean, t tons of, tons of ideas or things that have happened in comics have been forced from above and you know a lot of times it, it the creator is like oh i don't want to do that it usually leads to the end of their involvement with the book potentially anyways but i mean sometimes they're right you know i th i know i know in the late 80s i think that the I don't remember if Jim, I think it was when Jim Shooter left and they started having like Inferno and Atlantis attacks. I started hearing all these horror stories or reading about it in this history of Marvel where like these guy, guys like Chris Claremont had had these stories going on in X-Men and all of a sudden they were told you have to shoehorn whatever plans you had uh -huh. in into this Inferno outline or uh, storyline. And I think... I think that was the beginning of the end for Marvel in some ways, uh, as far as like that that weird uh, desert, that creative desert that that the '90s were for a lot of mainstream comics. That mm -hmm. it feels like it's been a struggle to get back to ever since. Um, but but yeah, that's got to be really frustrating. Of like, oh, I I didn't ask for this. Now I gotta. I had plans, and now I gotta make sure it shoehorns into five other right. titles and this, first and foremost, I, I don't it, like the basic it's a business of, um yeah you know it's like movie making or anything like you very rarely you know you don't you don't ever and, and something like this you don't ever get a singular voice not really um really? it's special when it happens and sometimes it happens and it doesn't work and it's good to have other voices but you know and that's yeah that's that's just the reality yeah. of the the industry um yeah but hopefully, you know, something like like Future State, you know, has again, I, I, I haven't read any of it. So I, sh yeah. I, I should I should just shut my mouth right now, but I'm going to keep talking. Um, <laughs> hopefully it's got hopefully it's got really. good people attached yeah. um, that are thoughtfully crafting stories. And, and not to say that anything else is not thoughtfully crafted. Nobody ever sets out to make something bad or, or, or you know, something that's sure. not that they don't think is going to affect someone or be someone's yeah. favorite. Like that's not a thing that, that people do, but no, you know, so far what I, what I have seen just through osmosis, I've, I've gathered that it is, um, it is something unique to what DC's done with other future storylines. Cause it's not post-apocalyptic. Like it's not evil Superman. It's not, um, there's no zombies. There's no like, oh, this terrible thing happened, and now the superheroes are dealing with this terrible thing, and the heroes are villains, and the villains are heroes, and it mm -hmm. seems like a genuine approach to like, really, what would the next generation or what would the near future of the DC universe look like? And I, I like that. I appreciate mm -hmm. that approach to it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, it does feel like they're throwing ideas at the wall to see what sticks, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And this might this might be I I, I do get the impression that I, maybe I'm repeating what you just said, but they're it, the things that seem to sell or work. Uh, they're going to lean into and the things that don't, they're going to be like, well, we were this wasn't meant as to, you know, permanent anyways. That might be a good approach. Yeah, it's a it's it's sort of like a way to not really lose unless it just bombs, which I don't think it will. Um, 
yeah i don't but know yeah you kind of have this safe space to try try things and yeah. um if something works great and if not you can fall back on like okay well now you know we're back to the normal timeline and and yeah you, you know have fun yeah So Todd, you had mentioned um, that you do oh. have an affinity for Days of Future Past. Oh yeah. I was going to ask Love you it. guys, what are your favorite future timelines in fiction? Uh, could include anything. You could say the Terminator if you'd like. It doesn't have to be comic specifically. I like that messed up future where like uh, Biff is like Donald Trump from Back to the Future too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well you guys know that days of future past is a ripoff of a doctor who episode i did not know that no i, I, I didn't know no. i'm not yeah. a doctor who guy chris, chris, chris i don't think chris i don't think it's a secret i think chris claremont basically came out and said it pretty early on he i think there's there's an episode of doctor who where the daleks have taken over in the future and they have to Somebody comes back from the future and says, in order to prevent this future, you have to kill somebody or do something. So, of course, it presents this moral dilemma. And they're like, oh, we're going to replace the Daleks with uh, Sentinels. Um, it's a great premise. Um, but I think I think Chris Claremont's a huge Doctor Who fan. They were always watching, looking at that stuff for ideas. I think there's videos about it on YouTube you can watch. About the the Doctor Who X Men connection, um, but yeah, Day, Days of Future Past just makes me so excited. I, I I just thought that was such a cool. At the time, like, you know, the the here, all these heroes getting killed off in the future, uh, so rapidly, and just that cover alone, it's like, oh my god, what is going on? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that cover is great. Kitty are the last two people, and there's all this who's dead like all these people uh that and I, I also love the reveal of magneto being in the wheelchair and he's the new head of the x-men I, I think it's one of those blink and you miss it moments but like the it, i love that idea of, of that must have been so shocking at the time for people to read it's amazing to me that burn left so quickly after that because I, I think some of the best stuff claremont and burn did were right at the end of that uh timeline or right at the end of their run. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know if I have too many future favorites. I've actually never read Days of Future Past. I haven't wow. either. Great. Well, how come? Like, it, it, like, are you guys not familiar with the X Men um, stuff? Like, is what's your familiar when you when you talk about X Men? Like, what have you guys read that? that is you know what what is your familiarity with x-men what was your era? yeah i haven't i haven't read a lot of it that's mostly it for me i haven't really read uh -huh. most of the really essential yeah issues or anything like that um i don't know why yeah i like x-men but i've not ever really read it much except I know, when i was a kid i know a lot of people will find this blasphemous but i one of the first comics <laughs> i actually read month to month was um brian michael bendis's uh all new x-men from a couple years back wow. where like the young X-Men from the sixties were brought to the present. And there was like oh. the culture shock of like what happens when, you know, these teenagers are time displaced and they start developing yeah. new personalities because of what they're exposed to. Oh. And interesting. Yeah. There's actually a really, it, it's a pretty cool premise because at that point in the X-Men Cyclops had teamed up with Magneto and was a terrorist um, oh. There were two rival X-Men schools, Magneto's school and the Jean Grey school, which yeah. was ex the previous Xavier Academy. Um, yeah. And Cyclops, the young Cyclops, had to come to terms with the fact that, like, in his timeline, he's fighting Magneto, but he sees mm -hmm. his future self siding with him. Mm -hmm. And what moral quandary, that yeah. like, what doubt is sowed by that. Um, really? Totally. Really cool ideas in it. Um, it wasn't the greatest comic of all time or anything, but that's where my X Men jumping on point actually was. Who who drew it? Do you have any record? Was it Stuart Amonin? Yes, he he definitely yeah. drew some of it. I think R B Silva did a little bit as well, if I'm not mistaken. But 
Um, yeah, Stuart yeah. Monin was on it at the beginning. And, uh, Stuart Monin, man, he's so amazing. he's so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's great. He's a guy. I don't know if you guys saw his early work, but like he's he was kind of like just a really good penciler for a long time, and then there was some point in the like late '90s, real I want to say the early 2000s, where all of a sudden his t- stuff took this giant leap, and um, came. Yeah, I can hear you. Totally good to. And I, I know a lot of people sat up and took notice because it was like, whoa, where's this coming from? Um, and it was, yeah, I, it's really admirable. I'm happy for his success. And anyways, the reason I bring it up is that, you know, what, regardless of what I think of that storyline, like you got some good art in there. That's a good, that's some good art to get exposed to the X-Men too. Mm. You know? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That's an interesting premise, though. Oh, man. God. It still works with the future timeline thing because the young X-Men were exposed yeah. to what their futures were. So yeah. <laughs> it stays on topic, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So here, yeah. here's um, either or pitch I'll give it to you guys. Okay. One is canon and one is not. Dark Knight Returns or Batman Beyond? What is Ooh. what is the more definitive in your mind, Batman conclusion? Oh, if it was going to be canon and like carry on, uh, Batman Beyond. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to say with that. I like Dark Knight Returns better. Yeah, but I associate it with Frank Miller. Like to me, that's Frank Miller's Batman. That's not the canon Batman. I think it could have been, yeah. but. I, I got yeah, one I of the most frustrating that. things I ever read was Batman Year One because I, I to me like I felt like that was Frank Miller trying to set the new stage for Batman, and they did four issues and then they went right back to regular old Batman and I that's I've always scratched my head over what in the world they were thinking when they did that I really still don't understand it, um, and I I think that if they'd done it correctly that batman year one could have been the definitive batman to this day so i think i think it could have been the future of batman um but yeah i i i actually have a theory that if dc does things correctly what they're really going to do do is try to start adhering to the the bruce tim animated stuff and they're going to make all that stuff more or less canon i I think it was done perfectly in those areas I feel like they've been kind of doing that for a while now. Well, yeah. Um, you know, introducing Phantasm into the uh, the one Batman yeah. book for the first time in comics ever. Um, yeah. I mean, Harley Quinn, of course, is hugely popular now. And actually, right. in Future yeah. State, not that it's an animated series thing, but from Teen Titans, right. I think Red X is in a Future State book, right? He is, is yep. Red X? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Very cool. Who is that? In um the Teen Titans show, Dick yeah. Grayson dons an alias to get closer to Deathstroke, and he invents Whoa. a supervillain persona who's a thief called the Red oh. X. Wow. But then in and the, the costume is so fucking cool. It yeah, it's an incredible character design. And then hmm. in the story, the suit is stolen and somebody else secretly takes on the mantle of Red Hood in the or, uh, red wow. x in the in the show wow and it's a mystery throughout wow. the show like who is the red x and they never reveal yeah. it they don't huh. that's interesting yeah that that's a character in future state that i'm excited to find out like what the deal is because <clears throat> I, I i'll stand for red x that is a character design and Oh, I just love it. It's awesome. Yeah, I think I think it's DC trying to do fan service in a way that's not distasteful. Um, like I I don't know. Like usually like fan servicey like blatant fan service things kind of bug me because I'm like, is there a story purpose mm. for it? But when it is like we're gonna introduce a character, if 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 the story calls for it, and if you make it work, yeah, absolutely introduce Red X. You know. Mm. Um, yeah. We like that character. We as as the fans like that character, and uh, you know, same thing with like Phantasm. 
finally coming into comics and and really you know like what todd was saying about like if if the dc animated universe was just canon yeah i'd be absolutely fine with that because i think it's a perfect distilling of the larger dc universe in many ways like especially with batman and superman um Mm. into something like easily digestible and concise like there's a timeline and uh you know, it, it sort of like shortens the history of the DC universe into something that that's really, you know, you can kind of like wrap your head around. Mm. Yeah. And if they went like if they just fully did that as well, I think it would be an, an interesting thing of like for new readers to like catch up on the history of it. You'd have to watch a show rather than reading all like loads and loads of back volumes of comics. I yeah. Like, like I think they really could say... Yet. Like, yeah, the history of the comics is the history of the comics, but, like, if you want, like, the Cliff Notes version, watch these episodes of these shows, and you can more or less be up to date, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also, I think, a matter of, like, um, every generation adding their own pieces to any canon or any mythology. Um, Right. Like, the people who are coming up in comics right now are people who grew up on those shows and Mm -hmm. those animated series. And so, exactly. like, it, it, like I know for me, like, those animated shows profoundly dictated my view of the DC pantheon. Yes. And, like, mm-hmm. for the people who are making comics professionally at both, or for at DC in particular, like, that is DC Comics. It's that show or that, that animated universe. So, it, I think it's also a matter right. of that, of, like, that's what DC is to them, and now they have the opportunity mm-hmm. to bring it into the fold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the titan show is canceled right it's done with the live action one yeah uh, that's the one you guys are talking about right no actually we're talking about the animated teen titans from the early 2000s oh i didn't realize that wow even cooler yeah i like that huh interesting yeah they might not have introduced a character from the titans show it's a fun watch, but it's just it's a it's a weird it's a weird show. It's a weird take. Hmm. Who are some of your uh, favorite future characters? Terry McGinnis, Miguel O'Hara, Doom twenty ninety nine. I know people still have an affinity for. Miguel O'Hara is fantastic. Yeah, that was a great book to read at the time when it came out. But it, but to me, it's if it's not Peter David and and Rick Leonardi, who the folks that started it, that's a little hard for me to get into. Which is the uh, the writer of that that pairing? Uh, Peter David. He actually. Rick Leonardi's... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say Peter David actually got to um do another Miguel O'Hara series that lasted like 14 issues in like 2016 or something or 2015 or so oh, wow. yeah i i was any actually idea? picking that up at the time y- y- any idea who drew it oh, not off the top of my head wow I, I peter david's a great writer yeah i actually was enjoying that series it's a shame it didn't last longer yeah it's surprising ain't that the way though it's probably yeah <laughs> He'll That's probably comics. show up in, in the next animated movie, mm-hmm. though. Yeah, definitely. Seems like a no-brainer. They already indicated it, I would assume. Yeah, I like uh, I like the Legion of Superheroes. It's oh, kind yeah. of like a, you know, like a it almost feels like a cop-out answer, you know, because they're not really like future versions of anybody. I guess some of them are, but. Yeah, it's just like a fun, just a fun premise, I think. Like a, you know, oh, okay. so far in the premise. future. One of the great premises. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I'm a big, I'm a big Legion of Superheroes fan. I'm glad that they, you yeah, know, me too. they started doing stuff with them again. Um, but they're also like, as, as future as it gets, like it always just feels like uh, a Silver Age comic to me um mm. silver and bronze age like kind of wacky stuff 
Nate, have, I forget if we've talked about this. Have you read the Black Hammer series of books? No, I haven't. Okay, I'm going to recommend it to you. Um, and I'm sure I've recommended it before, but one of the the spinoff books that came from that universe is that universe's virgin, version of the Legion of Superheroes. And oh, it's phenomenal. Really? Yeah, it's a really oh, cool awesome. take. It's like, um, it, it's a really well done like love letter and adaptation of that concept. Oh, that's wow. cool. Yeah, you would. It would be very much up your alley. But it, it's like one of the lighter books in the whole franchise, so you'd have to read all the back stuff first to kind of get yeah, the context yeah, yeah. of everything. But yeah, highly recommend that. Jeff Lemire. Mike, have you read Skull Digger? No, I've been waiting for the trade to come out actually. Oh yeah, I've been reading it. Is it good? As it as it comes out, yeah, it's fucking great, man. I really yeah. like it. Yeah, I've been like, reading. The story's it. great, and I now that I've been like, I mean, I mentioned this last time. Now that I've been moving to like do it, include interiors in my repertoire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been like, I read it, and now I've like been rereading what I've, what's already out, just on like a storytelling point of view, because it's fucking. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Tonki Zonjik. Oh, Tansi's John. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that so sounds good. more proper. <laughs> yeah, yeah Tanshi... just insanely good. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Oh. So so good. Yeah, that's all I'll say on the matter. Really. He always it's, he it's always makes really, me think really I'm good. drawing way too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he just uh the He's one of those guys I'm like way tell God, the story is so good. Yeah, God, why am I drawing so much? Like even this drawing right here, I'm like, why am I drawing so much of this person? <laughs> uh, I, think it's, I think it's harder to draw that way i think it's harder to to whittle things down to, to oh yeah way. absolutely yeah definitely yeah. that's why i don't i just hatch every line that could possibly exist in a space <laughs> <laughs> it just I'm shows you how good you, right? it just shows you how good of an artist i am because i can i can draw every detail on the face that's it's all <laughs> <a song. laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i always agree that it's like better to keep things simple and then i just start drawing and i just don't do that at all i just overdraw everything <laughs> yep <laughs> zoom right in until i can see the pixels it's easy to do johnny did you want to go into a little bit of your uh your pitch for red hood uh depth? yeah a little I mean, a red I robin excuse I... me yeah mostly it's just like ideas for when i started drawing um, and I haven't, it's not quite like the Suicide Squad episode where I thought really in depth about it. But yeah, so I've basically, I've finished the figure for Red Robin, so I'll show that. I kind of Ooh. went with a classic y kind of look. Beautiful. Um, I didn't go too futuristic. I was saying off uh, when we weren't recording that the most futuristic I went was just kind of putting somewhat futuristic y looking gadgets on his belt there. And I'm going to make them, you know, if I color it, I'm going to have them like have lights and shit like that to make it, you know, futurey. That's what future is, right? Um, <laughs> and then I've got like a very, get rid of that, a very Blade Runnery kind of backdrop with a lot of like, that's, those are made up characters. <laughs> and those are Japanese characters, but the words are entirely made up. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and you know fog coming through hmm. stuff like that um and then so he's gonna be like he's in my head he's like 30 odd and then i've got these side panels here so i've got in my head he would he would still be married to stephanie brown so i've got a future spoiler that i have not even started finalizing the drawing of yet but that's hmm. gonna be in there the new symbol that I also haven't worked out the final design of, but that's a layout there. Uh, the Sons of Crane, which was just a name I thought was really cool. And also, I don't think they've ever done like a... You always see like in the future, they did like the Jokers in Batman Beyond and stuff like that, where they there's a gang that takes up, that takes influence from one of Batman's villains. And I don't think they ever right. did it with Scarecrow. I might be wrong, but I thought that would be a really cool idea. It's a great I like a cool gimmick for them to have. To be like yeah. all about fear and shit. No, it's a and then idea, yeah, Roman Sionis in there to have kind of the connection with Stephanie Brown, and I kind of like the idea of if they did, if this story was real, it's one of those like 
he's back, but how is he back? I don't really remember what happened to the character. I read somewhere that Catwoman shot him in the face. Um, <laughs> so I kind of like the idea of him coming back and referencing, like talking to Stephanie Brown and referencing things that only, you know, that he would know as Roman Sionis and knowing that he killed her. But, you know, how is he back? Is it actually him? Is it someone else? And I don't know what, what the reveal of that would be. Mostly, I just thought this would be kind of a cool cover. And I put a bunch of references in there, too. I brought back the old Detective Comics logo. Uh, nice. And this, I was, again, saying off the recording that I wanted some kind of big advert behind him. And I was like, a perfume advert would be kind of cool amongst all these other sort of alien and and like japanese characters kind of like blade runner and i was wondering what perfume to do and for some reason i remembered that in the poison ivy episode of batman the animated series yeah there's like a moment i, I guess i'd rewatched it recently there's like a moment where they like batman asks alfred to pull up like any details they have on a pamela isley and she works for a, a perfume company and her most recent fragrance was Nightshade. So that's what the fragrance behind him is. There's a really deep reference that no one will get, including me, unless I happen to remember it and then <laughs> Google it to find out what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of like your poll yeah. of the, uh, the robot in your Suicide Squad. Um, you're kind of getting known for your deep, your deep dives. Oh, let us not yeah. forget the Crimson Clown. The crimson, the crimson clown, of clown. course. <laughs> and they're all deep uh, dives that I had to do a lot of research to actually know. So it's not even like a brag that I know it because I just Googled it. And then they're so in depth enough. that no one else would know it off of the, the top of their head. Like, mm -hmm. no one's going to know about Nightshade by Shea Girard being in five seconds <laughs> of a Batman episode. <laughs> Why did I need to yeah. do that? <laughs> now they will. Yeah, now they will. Some of them will. Whoever watches this will know. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, do you regret not putting the, the Crimson Clown in your cover? Mm, I was wondering about some kind of a Joker thing. Not that the Crimson Clown is the Joker. He's far, far more terrifying. But um, Far terrifying. Yeah. More terrifying. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I was, I was thinking of putting some kind of clown thing in there somewhere, but I'm just... There's a lot of the Joker. There's a lot of clowns around including in my own drawings. I've done a lot of Joker stuff. So, uh, no, I did not put any Crimson Clown or any other clown. But maybe if I come back to this. Do you remember in the Joker episode that we never aired, um, how there was all the clown memorabilia all over the wall, Johnny, in your piece? I do remember that. Yeah, That's going to yeah, be your home is... at some point with all of the clown drawings you've <laughs> done is. for me, Drink Think. Yeah, whether well. Soap likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> It just brings a smile to your face, and that's all that matters. You think exactly. she won't like that? No, no, of course not. She'll love that, I'm sure. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I mean, any woman just loves clown stuff. <laughs> on just the lots walls. of framed yeah. clown pictures. Yeah. Especially juggalos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want a clown makeup tutorial YouTube channel now. That's what I want to exist. I don't know if it does, yes, but I hope right. it does. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying, there like, from it. Johnny. Sure, if Johnny's up for it, he could do it himself. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm not It'll saying like I'd subscribe, but I'm, I want it to exist. Can we put it on the channel? I'll do it. Ooh, wait, maybe we'll make a side channel for that one. Maybe it'll be it'll be <laughs> it'll be parallel. You know, Johnny, like you're doing it on the side. Get what I'm saying? I can't believe you're suggesting it, and then you're immediately. You, I can't believe you're doing me like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> That's right. Man. Well, here, guys, if you're interested, we could start jumping around to check out uh, how far everybody got in their pieces so far. Anybody uh, yeah. interested? Who wants to show off? Flaunt what you got. Uh, give me just a second, and I will. But I yeah, I think I think things are going pretty well over here. I've got the figure almost done. Well, Nate. Well, if you're uh, you're willing to, while Todd's bringing up his, why don't we uh, hop over to your Blackbird? 
Blackhawk? Yeah, Blackbird? Yeah. I forget. Blackhawk, Black yeah. Blackhawk. Yeah. No, it's 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 going pretty well over here. I um I was saying before I went with like uh just kind of like a straight up sci fi look for the character, not too distant sci fi. Um I I had a design before that yeah. I was telling the guys about that um was a little bit more like far futury. Um, I was looking at the plug suits from uh, Evangelion, um, yeah. which I, I love, and I was like, "Ooh, I could take some notes from those and yeah. uh, make something pretty cool." And I do like that design, but it didn't it didn't fit with sort of the era that I am imagining this character to be in, and. Um, didn't match the plane that I drew in the background and I didn't want to redraw the plane. So I went with this one. That's a little more low tech, but I also, this like, isn't, it's not skin tight. Like the other one was like the kind of like the plug suits are, um, or like a, like zero suit Samus from Metroid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Played Metroid, something like that. I was like, that'd be a cool approach. And I do like that, but it seems a little far futury. Uh, but the black Hawk, uh, Blackhawk and the Blackhawk Squadron, you know, they never really wore anything like super heroic or skin tight in their classic looks. And so I thought that this would kind of like keep with that tradition a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. And sure. uh, so she's got like this cool like fighter pilot uh, kind of sci-fi look going on. And she's got that classic Blackhawk uh, jacket thrown over her shoulder. Um and something I've yet to ink is the helmet that she wears in the uh, in the cockpit. That's got like a it's got like a beak kind of look on the front for like a respirator kind of thing. Um, yeah, it looks like a beak. So that's, that's just like a cool. fun, smart, fun like kind of obvious thing to do. But I was like, yeah, I got to do it. Got to give her a beak. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. I cool. looked at. For, for kind of like some design help on that, I kind of stole from uh, some of the uh, Spartan helmets from Halo. Mm. Which I think some of those have some really cool designs. So I, I looked at a lot of those for inspiration for that. Not that you can see it because my palm is on it right now. but <laughs> I was going to say it sounds like Starhawks or something, but th uh, that's just a coincidence. Uh, yeah, actually, um, yeah, it'd definitely be a coincidence, although, I don't know, maybe I could have looked at some more of that for, like, the, the jet design. I thought about going in and, like, actually designing a jet kind of from the ground up, but then I thought for this piece, that would just be <laughs> a background element, yeah. and so I was like, oh, I'll just kind of, like, I, I have a reference photo of, like, a World War II, um, uh, like fighter plane uh which i had a bunch of collected actually for a poster i did the other day and so i looked at a bunch of those and i was like well let me just like try and update these and and honestly like i don't remember exactly what the jet looks like from swat cats but i feel mm. like this is probably something like that mm. <laughs> interesting i really like what you did with the sleeve actually um Almost like the, uh, the <laughs> like a flexible tube texture. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really sci-fi and really fun. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that was one of the more sort of like, yeah, kind of fun sci-fi elements uh, that I put in. I was thinking about like Darth Vader sleeves or Kylo Ren sleeves. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And how yeah, they're cool. they look they look like really kind of like cozy and insulated and and just cool. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there's gonna there's like lots of straps because I feel like pilots always have like a lot of straps um, right. for like parachutes and uh, and just you know I don't know like yeah. seat belts or whatever whatever's going on. So there's a lot of straps, <laughs> but uh, you can tell I really did my research. But she got like a cool sidearm and there's like kind of like a cool utility belt kind of a thing with her big old baggy aviator flight suit pants. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with with this design. I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I think it would stand out also in in kind of like a DC superhero world, which is why I didn't yeah. go with the skin tight one. I was like, I want her to kind of like the Blackhawks do against superheroes. I want her to stand out as not really 
a superhero, especially if she's going to be like a mm. new generation's leader of the of a, like a new Black Hawk squadron. I thought this would be a cool way to go. Yeah. Well, you're killing it, man. I know you were you were indecisive you. at first about how sci-fi you wanted to take it, but I think oh, you really, was. I think you really brought out um, exactly what this piece needed to be. Like it looks, oh, thank you. realistic to the point where if you told me it was just like a, a pilot, I'd believe you. But it's got enough tech slash stylistic influence to be sci-fi that if it were in an anime mm -hmm. or like Akira or something, I'd completely believe you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Anytime I I sort of think about like sci-fi stuff, I do tend to look at like uh, manga and anime for influence. I think that that okay. stuff has like some really, at least over here in in the states, like or, or the Western world. Um, I feel like they kind of like think about updating things or technology or whatever, like a little bit differently. If you think about like you know yeah. Uh, you know mecha anime and stuff like those robots are just things that would not come from yeah. uh an american artist yeah, yeah for sure it seems but it's but it seems like it was started by american influences like i feel like they took blade runner and ran with it in a in a way that like america should have done but of course we're <laughs> they're just so much better at it you know yeah we're good at ideas over here but follow through maybe not well, speaking yeah. of somebody who never follows through, but typically has good ideas, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, I love yeah, it. I, I love it. I love <laughs> I just pick it on you tonight in particular. <laughs> I was going to say, how is your Red Robin turning out, man? Uh, yeah, good. I'm starting to lay out some buildings, um, figure out where I want the shadows to be. Uh, let's get rid of the pencils. I've kept like I kept like a low opacity pencil of when I was planning out his costume where the blacks were gonna be, so I've kind of kept that on there because I like the look of it. Um, but yeah, this is where it's at so far. Um, yeah, I like that duotone like you've him. done for the black, like like using that the the blue pencil line in there. It feels very like screen printed. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the direction i'm going to go with colors in some way um i do want quite a lot of neon i don't know whether i'm going to skew more pink rather than red in the actual coloring he's obviously going to be basically black and red and i think i'm going to have like a pink kind of hue to it um just because i want this neon kind of thing i'm going to be cutting away a lot of this black as well i'm putting in like a lot of heavy black that i'm going to cut away um for like smoke kind of the the blade runner kind of aesthetic of everything just being really foggy and smoky all the time um pretty happy with him That's like awesome. i said before the show yeah that looks um, good for some thanks man um for some reason this this one i like i had a day of like being able to pencil before the show today and i thought i was going to get the whole thing really nicely done um and be ready to just ink over very very tight pencils and i ended up spending the entire day just doing different figures for red robin i did like 10 that were like all i got them to the really tight stages and then was just like nope you know what it's i'm gonna try something else let's see if it works and i did that so many times um i eventually ended up with one i was happy with so it, it worked out in the end sometimes it it, it do be like that yeah. <laughs> well I, I love the uh attention you put into the the whole cover design including like stephanie in there and uh like black mask who is not necessarily associated with tim at all but has a deep connection mm. to steph i think yeah really yeah. creative and of course uh i like your take on the uh the sons of crane absolutely fantastic and right up your alley as Thanks, well with man. like the creepy element of that so yeah yeah for sure yeah right. I'm, I'm i'm pretty happy with it to be honest i yeah like i said the these side panels are just a complete rip off of becky clunan but i mm. saw it recently and couldn't get it out of my head and when i started thinking of other ideas for story for this series i was like i have to have some other panels in there 
I I got to include some other stuff. So it's happened. She's great. Mm. Yeah, she's so good. Um, yeah. I, I will call this a homage. <laughs> nice. Johnny, I can't believe it, but I'm going to have to recant my statement about you not being able to follow through on your good ideas. <laughs> Thank this, you, man. this one, this right. one's a rare exception for you. It's quite good. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm happy with that. I'll take that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Great work, man. And you know, we'll Thank have to you. talk about Tim sometime because absolutely my, my yeah. favorite Robin hands down. Oh, no question. Yeah. He's the he best, the best one, the best Robin. It, I'm going to go on a tangent if we, if we don't cut that there, but <laughs> I, yeah, I love this. I, I'm so happy that someone picked, red robin because i do love that suit as well uh an alex mm, ross yeah. design if i'm not mistaken um i think yeah, it is from yeah. kingdom come and i just feel like i've always felt like it would be it would be so cool to see him like 30 or 40 taking on the mantle yeah being the new seems that, the new seems batman like seems about the most natural of anybody taking over a mantle from somebody yeah yeah and i also we were saying before like unrecorded that uh i i feel like he wouldn't just become the new batman because well in my head no. anyway just because i love that red robin design so much yeah. the like first one i think it, i think it was the first mm -hmm. one where he has like the cowl that's mm -hmm. like basically batman's cowl but without any ears so cool mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think that's one of the fun elements of uh <clears throat> like all of the bat family is that if you were to pitch like who who should be the next batman like i don't think any of them should i think that them as adults operate and fill different niches that Batman did as one individual, you know? And yeah, Tim yeah. is, Tim is the detective. Like I agree. Like he's too light to be Batman. He's too lighthearted. Mm. Um, and so for him to like retain the mantle of red Robin, but fill the detective superhero niche in Gotham, I think is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's better to become your own character. If you ask me, Hmm. Well, speaking of Todd, Todd, <laughs> we'll jump around. Uh -oh. How has your Mr. Freeze turned out? Did you keep the bubbles? Because I actually thought they were pretty cool when you showed them at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Well, here's my, okay. So here's my problem with those bubbles is that for one thing, I don't think he'd be able to fit through a door with those things on his legs. <laughs> um, I like it in theory. I like the idea that the, the, the bubble around his head goes back to being a bubble as opposed to a dome. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Ultimately it's not working for me for right now. So I'm going back to whatever it is I'm doing here. Um, but I did have an interesting happy accident. So I, I've added something important since, since we started. And that is, um, I went to, I accidentally had my dot brush on and a bunch of dots appeared on his face when I went to draw his eyes. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have a Mr. Freeze that's merged with Brainiac. Um, so Ooh. this is my, my, this is my Brainiac Mr. Freeze. Um, oh, nice. I love yeah. that. And I, yeah. uh, I don't know exactly how it would work, but it does seem like there could be a pairing there. Um, mm. Cold you know, and calculating. The, well, like some of my favorite moments from the Justice League cartoon, and this has been going on in the comics for decades, is, is the Luthor Brainiac uh uh team up or the dark side brainiac team up and um i'd never thought about brainiac teaming up with other characters but mr freeze kind of seems like one he could you know he's got that suit so brainiac could infect it pretty easily and um you know mr freeze is on some level a sympathetic character but he's also a guy that becomes very nihilistic and mm. um I could see the, the and they're similar looking, um, but I, uh, yeah, I see. I feel like there's a visual there that's kind of similar with the two. So I thought it would be interesting to team up. It, I would probably say he's the most likely Batman villain to be teamed up with Brainiac, unless you guys can think of one I'm not thinking of. But I feel like they're the the most obvious pairing. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think so. But I'm yeah. making this up as I go along, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and then I, so I came up with this alternate version as well, uh, that's like a, I thought it'd be interesting to switch back and forth between a white version and a black version, 
you know, maybe I, oh, I, yeah. I'm trying to go with a neon Tron thing, especially like, I don't know if he's in a dark room. I like the idea of these lines on his costume just showing up and um, probably be fun for lots of visual opportunities. Um, I, I am trying to put some good lines on here and I, I don't know. It's been frustrating. I, I, I feel like in a week uh, after I've walked away from the drawing, I'll be like, oh, I should have done this or that, you know. But for now, I'm trying to, I don't know, put fleek Tron-esque lines into things. And Brainiac seems to have made his way into this design, as he usually does. Yeah. As, yeah. as, <laughs> as a virus. <laughs> so there I, you go. I really like, I mean, if you think about... um the classic or i should say not really classic but original mr freeze design where he did have like pink in his costume i really like yeah. in your first option that you included that red as almost like a yeah. unintentional or intentional reference to that original design of the character i think it works really well well i was looking at the, the bruce Tim mr freeze and um, he has red eyes in most of it. And I kept going back and forth because that's one of the big questions is if you're going to do Mr. Freeze, are you going to do those red goggles he wears? Are his eyes red? Are you going to even do any of that? Is he, you know, I'm going for the more skull-like face that uh, skull, in, skull in a bottle that they, they lean towards at times. Mm. Um, you know. It's like there's certain things you have to do to make it Mr. Freeze, and I feel like the getting that face right is one of those things that has to be carefully considered. So if I take away... Ooh, that's right. I've been really struggling with layers, though. I keep having to duplicate and combine things because I run out of layers for some reason really fast with these drawings. But there you go. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's that's very cool. Yeah, mm. and a great pleasant surprise because I had no idea who you were going to draw. Yeah. But, but Mr. Freeze yeah. is a great pull. Yeah. I wasn't feeling this until the last minute. I, I really wasn't sure. I almost worked on other stuff while you guys did this. I was going to bow, not go with it and do something different and just work on my personal stuff for a little while. But then I, I don't know, like I said, Mr. Freeze, I was like, oh, yeah, I can do that. That, that sounds good. I just didn't have any ideas. Well, I'm glad we got to see this. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Pleasant yeah, surprise. That's the, the yeah. only word for it. Pleasant surprise. Nice. <laughs> well, here, guys, I'll move around to my piece to uh, round out our yeah. quartet here. Um, so I got fairly far. Um, with the Shazam piece, um, I started even inking the sky. Um, oh, nice. Not to the point where I could finish the sky because um, one has to dry, and I intend on using the uh, good old jelly pen to uh, put the lightning in the clouds and kind of like draw it to his hand here. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty proud of how the design came out for this future Shazam. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm, especially yeah. considering like <laughs> you guys know as of this morning, I was texting you being like, I'm going to do Constantine. I'm going to do the Justice League Dark. I'm going to do Shazam. <laughs> yeah. I, had no, I had no idea what this was going to turn into today. And uh, I spent a good hour and a half <laughs> just like refining the pencils to a point on the design of the costume that I was like, yeah, you know, I might be able to do something with that. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I'm proud of how it turned out. I did some some interesting design choices with it, like um, the baggy like half sleeves that he has um, revealing kind of this like tech undersuit. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that would be a fun idea. Uh, the, the struggle with this character, which you guys know I was putting on myself was, uh, magic in the future. Cause I wanted to do mm -hmm. some of the magical elements of the DC universe in this future timeline. Um, yeah. and so Shazam in particular, I thought would be a fun one to try out, especially because like his suit is kind of regal looking the classic Captain Marvel faucet comics. Look, yeah. That is, um, and I think I was able to pull that together into something that is very clearly Shazam, but is not just, oh, it's the same costume with, you know, added detail. Like, I, I tried to change it up enough that it looked distinct, yet similar to what you know of as Shazam. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident in this one, and uh, this one's definitely going to call for awesome. color, I think, for sure. 
which I don't, don't always do, but this one definitely will. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it looks I, great, man. I think you guys should all try to put color in your work whenever possible. I'd love to see it. It's awesome. You guys have great palettes. Thanks, Thanks buddy. Man. Yeah. Coming from you, that means everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talking about great that. palettes. Come on. <laughs> I'll rag on Johnny, but Todd, I only have compliments for. <laughs> right right notice that yeah that's the dynamic we have here on ink drink think <laughs> but yeah the i'm actually very excited to do the background on this uh of course i'm not doing it tonight but um i put in some like middle eastern inspired buildings like mosque-esque architecture in some of the background mm. elements uh that are gonna be fun to play around with but yeah all in all yeah. uh it's coming along pretty smoothly. Um, I think it's going to be a really good finalized piece when it's done. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, I think conceptually cool. it's it's really strong. Thanks, man. Um, also also in execution. Ah, <laughs> Johnny, I've like, got that above yeah. you. The, the idea was <laughs> great, but I don't know I what you did with it. don't have execution now, do I? Yeah. <laughs> Stick around yeah, afterwards. Johnny I can or, teach you a few things. Yeah. Our meticulous <laughs> <laughs> execution. <laughs> Uh, well, on that note, guys, that just about wraps up the video. Make sure you check out the description below. You can find not only the Instagram links for all of our personal Instagrams, but the official Ink Drink Think Instagram page where you can check out all of these finalized pieces as well as every finalized piece from every episode of Ink Drink Think to date. And if you're checking this out in the future, there might be some future episode art on there as well. Tying it back into future state. Theme of the episode. <laughs> of course, guys, check out the comments below as well. Let us know what some of your favorite future timelines and comics and film and TV and books and all sorts of media are. Uh, again, sometimes we reply, sometimes we don't. If you left a comment, maybe we would. <laughs> Looking at all three of our subscribers on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, guys, thank you so much for tuning into episode 17 of Ink Drink Think, the future state episode. I have been michael pickard joined by my wonderfully talented co-hosts and friends johnny wise nate wells and todd blackwood make sure you guys tune into episode 18 who knows what the hell we're gonna draw yeah <laughs>